Hello, welcome to EPG Patshala. My name is Mohua Nigudkar. I'm assistant professor with the School of Social Work, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. Today we are going to cover a very, very important module and that is social work with children. And why is it an important field of practice? This module has three parts and I will be first starting with part one of this module. So what will this module cover? Well, this module is part of the paper on fields of practice. Now going to what this module will cover. This module will cover a basic understanding of who is a child, what is childhood, different approaches and perspectives of working with children, why is child and childhood an important field of practice, and what are the things we need to remember when we as social workers are intervening in the lives of children. So moving on, to reinforce what this module will cover, as I already mentioned who is a child and what is childhood, this module will also cover this whole understanding of childhood as a social construct. Then we will move on to some key terms and terminology and I will end this module summarizing the main points that has been presented. We now move on to who is a child. Well, the word child is known to all of us. It's one phase of life or one state of being that all of us have gone through. Of course, our experiences have been different based on our social context and the way we grew up. But we have all been children at some point or the other in time. So who is a child? A child is any young person who has not completed 18 years of age as per the legal dimension of understanding who is a child. But when we think of the word child, it also conjures up different images in our mind. So we may think of the child as somebody very young, somebody smallish. We may also associate some characteristics of a child in our image. So we may think of the child as someone naughty or mischievous or innocent or playful. We may also associate child and childhood with a certain period of life as it being joyous and so on and so forth. So the word child apart from the age factor also conjures up different kinds of images in our mind when we think of children. Child as a word and as a term and as a state of being is also very, very closely linked to our responsibility as adults. Whichever sphere may, we may be in, we may be parents, we may be teachers, we may be social workers, we may be government officials, we may be other stakeholders, we may be working with the legal system. Directly or indirectly, our work may bring us in contact with children. Yes, as parents and as teachers, we may be much more in direct contact with children. So coming back to this whole point that word child is also associated with our responsibility as an adult to ensure that children grow up well and that we are able to optimally care and nurture for them. Now moving on to the next topic, so if a child is a young person and in our mind probably a young person who is small, child does not necessarily mean only children who are very small. As I mentioned the legal dimension is all young persons who have not completed 18 years of age. So child would also be somebody who is 16, child would also be somebody who is 17, 17 and a half and till they complete 18 years of age, as a child they are entitled to certain adult rights and adult protection and of course guidance and supervision. Now what is childhood? While this whole state of being a child and the age factor would be common across all of us. So all of us, for example, after 6 will become 7, after 10 will become 11 and so on and so forth. Childhood as an experience is unique to each one of us. So each child experiences childhood very differently. Though we would like to think and imagine that childhood is a joyous period for everybody and all children are very happy and enjoying their lives, unfortunately the reality is not so. Especially within the context of vulnerable children, within the context of marginalized children. So childhood and fact for what makes childhood a period of great joy and innocence and of discovering the world 
to a period of abuse and exploitation can be dependent on the family that we are born in, the identities that we may have, the school that we go to, health resources that we may have access to, so socio-economic, cultural context, resources that our family has, resources that our community has access to, the cultural practices, how adults look at us as children, whether adults look at us as a period where we can explore the world, where we need joy, we need care and nurturance, or whether adults view us very authoritarianly, they look at us as objects who are only supposed to listen to adults without any scope of participation. So childhood as an experience and as a phase of human life in the lifespan is dependent on several of these factors. And all of these factors determine how our childhood will be and of course it also has implications largely on the way our adults life are going to shape up. So if you look at the age factor, the age factor is important for us to understand because this means that young persons less than 18 years of age are not permitted to engage in certain activities. Let's say for example driving or smoking or marrying or voting etc. This cutoff age has been established towards ensuring safeguards for children that is supposed to be beneficial for them. Different kinds of research across the world has also proved that growth, development, maturation processes, maturity of children happens over a period of time. Further, there are also special child related laws which provide child protection against neglect, abuse, exploitation and such other crimes committed by children. So there is a very important legal dimension when we are looking at child and childhood. While there would be one set of laws which prohibit children from getting into certain activities which is understood is not age appropriate, yet there would be another set of laws which provide safeguards for children and if abuse and harm does happen then there are stringent measures against the accused or the perpetrator of such crimes. The age factor also determines, and another important point, specific state interventions in forms of policies and programs in critical areas such as, for example, immunization, health, nutrition, education and such other special needs unique to children. And that is why child, childhood, the state of being, the age factor, experiences of what denotes a childhood, the legal dimension, the policy context, the political context of our commitment towards working with children, all will determine how our children are growing up and what needs to be done for those children who do not have facilities for them. Now we will move on to, as mentioned earlier, the word child has a certain age factor. However, childhood is a phase of that young person's life during the years of being a child and is a combination of growth, development, experiences, life situation, knowledge and understanding. All of us have been children at some point in time, but our childhood experiences are different based on life during the growing years, the family that we were born into, our identity, the support that we've received, the monetary or economic resources and our own traits and characteristics that defined us and continue to define us. Though, as I mentioned earlier, we may have image of a child being carefree and innocent, unfortunately for several children across the world and in India, childhood is a period of gross neglect, harsh treatment, abuse, deprivation and discrimination. Now let us move on. So, as mentioned, there are different contributing factors for a child to grow up well in situations of poverty, discrimination due to caste and class differences, gender, lack of access to basic facilities such as health and education, domestic violence and strife in the house, harsh punishment, cruelty, indifference, etc. Childhood can be a period of distress, anxiety and fear. This makes children vulnerable and has negative implications on their current life and maybe future prospects as well. Childhood experiences is also determined by the socio-cultural context. 
For example, in neighborhoods or communities where there is a high number of school dropouts and other situations such as child labor or child marriage, especially that of the girl child in terms of child marriage, children and families may not have sufficient role models in those societies or communities who have managed to break the barriers and come out of the situations. Further, to exacerbate the situation in the absence of strong measures to effectively address, address some of these very serious issues of child vulnerability, there is such a tacit acceptance that such social realities will continue. So children growing up in such neighborhoods will grow up very differently and probably have very different childhood experiences than children in a neighborhood where all children are going to school, there is a high level of awareness about child labor, there is practically no child marriage and the children are growing up in a supportive family. In social work with children, many a times we are particularly working with vulnerable and marginalized groups of children. Now let us move on. Childhood a social construct. So we move on to another topic and that is childhood a social construct. So when we refer to childhood as a social construct, what does it mean? It means that this term is not an innate or inherent category. It is an idea that has been created and accepted by society based on collective experience, social and cultural practices. Now the Oxford Dictionary, online dictionary, defines social construct as a concept or perception of something based on the collective views developed and maintained within a society or social group, a social phenomenon or convention originating within and cultivated by society or a particular social group as opposed to something existing inherently or naturally. So when we look at childhood as a social construct, it would mean that childhood as a phase is a social construct and this term childhood and the meaning that has been given to childhood is something society over a period of time through its collective memory and experience has coined this category of childhood or as this category of young human life as a phase requiring special attention and care. This also gets linked to some extent to the history of childhood. Now very briefly to go into the history of childhood, it has been documented across different sources and by different social scientists and even historians that in very early civilizations, childhood as a separate category did not exist. Children were largely treated as many adults and they did most of the chores as their parents. Many of the young male child would be trained to get into the army. The girl children and the women would be largely at home. And so children and childhood as a special category requiring specific care, attention, policies did not emerge in the very early civilizations. As time grew by, with the advent of modern technology, infant mortality decreased, the number of children who lived beyond their first five years of life increased, attachment between parents and children grew, the reformers, the social reformers, this whole recognition that children and young people require education, require learning, all of that started happening. And as we see in the more recent civilizations, we find that specific laws originated in different parts of the world which accorded children a certain status and also there was this recognition that health, education and certain critical needs are required for children in their early years. So let us move on from the history of childhood and I would strongly urge all of you to read much more on the history of childhood as well as read the write-up in this module. Look up the other references because child and childhood is a vast area and we need to build a comprehensive knowledge around it. Now let us move on to another topic and that is different perspectives and approaches of understanding child and childhood. There are different theories and approaches within social science to 
understand child and childhood and no one theory or one perspective or one approach can fully explain all aspects of a human being as human lives are complex and multidimensional. Nonetheless, each theory or perspective or approach focus on certain aspects and dimension of human growth and development. While some theories are specifically child focused, there would be other general theories which I am sure you two already know about which can be applied to understanding child and childhood. For example, there are many theories which are related to cognitive development of the child. So processes of the thinking, processes of thinking, mind, analysis, mental processes. Then there are theories which are focusing on moral development. Well, how do values and the framework of principles get developed among us? There are theories which focus on psychosexual development, psychosocial development, social learning and behavior of children and so on and so forth. So there are different different kind of theories which are child focused and which deal with different aspects of that child's life, be it the cognitive aspect, the behavioral aspect, the psychosocial aspect, etc. There are other theories and perspectives related to the relationship between human life and their experiences, between human life and their environment, situations and impacts impacting the course of life, uh, sorry, situations and events impacting the course of life optimizing human potential by focusing on individual strengths rather than deficits. So there would be a certain set of theories which will focus on individuals, human beings and their relation to the social environment around them. Yet another group of theories will look at larger macro issues of structural oppression, discrimination, power relations among people in society which impact human life and behavior. Now the purpose of very briefly give, mentioning all of these as instances and examples is to state that social work is largely an applied social science and we need to build our own comprehensive approaches and perspectives around all of these theories and then our intervention will be more relevant for the children or young people that we work with. Now we will move on. We move on to some more aspects of the different perspectives and understanding of child and childhood. Now within the domain of social sciences, psychology, sociology, anthropology, laws and legislation, critical geography, view child and childhood on different aspects within their own domain specialization. So based on your interest and aptitude, you may want to read how different social sciences like psychology, which looks at self, personality development, sociology, which looks at social structures, anthropology, which looks such cultural practices, etc. Then it would also be important to study some of these approaches if we wish to work with children. The legal approach accords rights to the child and also outlines redressal mechanisms to address violation of these rights. Understanding the political context too becomes very, very important in terms of the commitment of the state towards child rights and child protection, budgetary provisions and effective implementation of laws, schemes and programs. As I mentioned earlier, social work being an applied social science and largely using an eclectic approach develops its knowledge base from studying the different approaches, perspectives, laws, etc. while building a comprehensive knowledge base and an attitude of working towards fulfillment of human rights, dignity and entitlement. Now let us move on to some key terms and terminology and very briefly I'll touch upon some of these key terms and terminology and then you may want to read up the writer for some more information. This list is not exhaustive but highlights some of the important terms to be kept in mind especially when we are working with children within the social work context and interventions. Some of the terms are vulnerability, abuse, marginalization, ill treatment and or maltreatment, violence, neglect, exploitation, child rights, child protection. Now to quickly go over all of these terms. So let us start with the term vulnerability. What would vulnerability mean? 
Vulnerability largely means a person is open to harm and injury and is susceptible to harm. This does not necessarily mean that all children are being harmed or are being abused or exploited. But we need to keep in mind that a child because of their young age and developing capacities may have much more um, scope, much more vulnerability rather in comparison to adults. Now, many children are vulnerable due to other factors such as poverty, gender discrimination, dominating approach of adults towards children, abuse and exploitation. Further, many of these children do not have access to even basic resources. This causes further marginalization. So, vulnerability can occur within the family. Vulnerability can occur in school, it can occur in the community and there are other larger structural reasons also that create situations of vulnerability for children. Now we move on to the next topic that is abuse. Abuse is a very very serious crime that is committed against children. Abuse if you look at the definition of abuse you will look at harm, you will look at injury, abuse has serious implications on the physical, mental, emotional development of the child. Abuse can be short term, long term, abuse can be of different kinds also. So you, you can have physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse and across the world it has been found that this is one of the serious situations of vulnerability that many children are facing and are experiencing. So we move on to another term and that is marginalization. If you look at this whole concept of marginalization, it is this whole um, deprivation of people of, towards access of certain basic resources and entitlements. And for children and social work with children, many of the children that we will work with will be experiencing abuse or vulnerability or marginalization. Hence, a clarity on what these terms mean are important. We move on to yet another topic or a yet another term rather and that is ill treatment and maltreatment. You will be coming across several children who are experiencing ill treatment, maltreatment. This is akin to harm, injury, gross violence on the child which has long term negative implications on the child. Moving on to yet another term that is violence. Now violence is something that cuts across societies and there are different kinds of violence. You can have violence, you, you may be uh, coming across situations where there is violence within the home, there is domestic violence, there is violence among partners, there is violence between the parent and the children, there is violence in society, violence could occur in school, there would be larger violence that is impacting large groups of people in society. So if you look at the WHO understanding or definition of violence, they define violence as the intentional use of physical force or power threatened or actual against oneself, another person or against a group or community that either results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, maldevelopment or deprivation. Majority of vulnerable children experience or witness some form of violence in their young lives which leads to some very very detrimental outcomes. Violence can also be within self and that is one form of violence is self-directed which also could lead to self-abuse or extreme cases like suicide. Let's move on to another term and that is neglect. Neglect is understood as a failure to provide or ignore or overlook somebody's basic needs or something that somebody basically requires or wants. Within the context of children, then there is a definition, online definition. If you look at the Webster de definition, you will find that neglect is understood as a failure to provide a child under one's care with proper food, clothing, shelter, supervision, medical care or emotional stability. For a growing child, certain needs to be critically met 
and hence willful neglect of a child which results in harm is one form of ill treatment and is also one form of abuse. For example, if children are not provided adequate food or nutrition or health care due to indifference or disregard for that child's needs, it is a gross form of neglect and abuse. So now we move on to yet another very, very serious situation facing children and that is exploitation. If we look at the word exploitation, exploitation largely means using somebody for one's own gains. Within the context of children, a large number of children are being exploited by adults. They are being exploited into child labor, they are being trafficked, they are being compelled into begging, they are into addiction. So in exploitation, which is a serious crime against children, there would be an adult or a group of adults or an organized crime where, is, where there is some gain for that adult. We move on to now two positive words and that is child rights and child protection. Child rights is a set of measures or a set of entitlements that each and every child in society irrespective of their age and their background and their social standing or their cultural context are entitled to by being members or by being human beings of a society. The United Nations Conventions on the Rights of the Child CRC is an international document that has a comprehensive set of rights for children. Each country which ratifies this convention is expected to harmonize these rights within their own national laws and policies so as to ensure that these rights are being effectively fulfilled in their country. India has ratified the CRC and has harmonized many of these child rights, if not all, into their own national laws and legislation. Then we come into child protection. Child protection is one area where a lot of focus and attention is happening in India. Child protection has two dimensions. One way of looking at child protection is all safeguards, all measures, all interventions that can be urgently undertaken to address situations of violence, exploitation, abuse and neglect of children. And everything that all stakeholders can do, including families, communities, society, the state to address this gross violation. Yet another dimension of child protection and which is a very, very important dimension is preventing children from getting into or from being, um, from experiencing situations of violence, abuse, exploitation and neglect. So different kind of safeguards, different kind of programs, different kind of intervention strategies that will ensure that children grow up safe, secure and do not have to experience violence, exploitation, abuse and neglect. So now if we look at all of these terms, these terms cannot be understood independent of each other. There would be several children who are facing or experiencing a combination of abuse, neglect, exploitation. So when we are looking at all of these terms and terminologies, while it is important to understand some of the distinct aspects of these terms, when we are analyzing a child's vulnerability or marginalization, we need to see the different layers of vulnerability that a child may go through. Now let us summarize this module. This module briefly touched upon who is a child, what is childhood, different perspectives and approaches of looking at children, what is child vulnerability and marginalization. And as a social worker, if we want to intervene with children and make their lives whole again, then the different areas that we would need to look into. But to be able to look into those different areas, we need to have clarity in our own concepts, in our own understanding of childhood, how childhood is so subjective and contextual to that child's life. So this was part one of the module related to social work with children. We would be having two other parts where we would delve into some of the more different aspects of working with children as a social worker.